Windows XP, um, and still can't play in Windows 7, although the compatibility mode in Windows 7 I find actually very, very good. Um, but if you go to play some of those old DOS or Windows 95, early Windows 95 games, a lot of times the support for those just doesn't exist, and you either have to emulate uh, a DOS box or something like that just to play the games that you own, um, or you're, you just have to build a, a classic gaming rig with, with old stuff and with an old operating system to play those games. And um, in that case, it is absolutely, I mean, I agree 100%. I love having those old cases and those old boxes in my hand to be able to, you know, throw those into the, uh, to the old machines. But the point is, we are really at the mercy of those operating systems, right? If, if you can't run those games on newer operating systems, whether you downloaded them or whether you have them uh, on a physical media, it really isn't going to matter, right? So I, I kind of see both sides of that. I, I'm not sure which uh, side I fall on, but I understand exactly why you guys prefer having a box in your hand versus uh, buying something digital distribution or buying something at an online retailer. And I'm not even going to respond to what Arcus said about uh, pirating games. Now, um, here's my two cents about what, what I do with new games. Generally, I'm going to do exactly what all of you did. I, I don't generally buy new games. I like to sit and wait for, for the good deals. There are a lot of reasons for that. One, um, I don't have an insatiable appetite for new games, particularly because I don't have a lot of time to play new games. And if you saw the list of games that I have not yet played from the last five years, I think all of you would be a little embarrassed. Um, <laughs> Uh, I am much more of a retro gamer than I am a uh, modern or contemporary video game player. I enjoy contemporary games, and I do play a lot of them. I just finished Halo Reach, for example, um, which was fantastic. But I, but I, uh, my, the games that I have that are classic or current gen are, uh, I'm sorry, are current gen, um, really are very, very small. I don't have a lot of those games. So, that being said... When I do buy a new game, I have to say I actually really prefer to buy it online. Maybe that's that's my motivation for asking this question because I just don't buy new games at brick and mortar stores anymore. The only way I will, and several of you talked about this, is if I'm walking by and I see some kind of special that's just unavoidable. Um, you walk by and someone's just slashed a game that I was kind of on the fence about by 20 bucks. Yeah, I, I could probably bite on that. If, if it goes down, and you know, maybe a daily sale or, um, you know, some of the, the, the post-Thanksgiving sales, for example. A lot of times you can, you can get good deals at brick-and-mortar stores uh, that way fairly well. So um, that's really the only way I buy them there. I really enjoy buying my video games from an Amazon.com or buying... Um, from some online re retailer. I don't, I've never bought a new game on eBay, although I used to buy a lot of used games. So, um, so I'm just going to throw that out there. But specifically talking about new games, I, I really prefer the, uh, the online method. Now, I'll tell you, I also just, I mentioned Halo Reach. Uh, actually, I had an issue with it. Got Halo Reach um, for about Christmas time this year. Popped it in the drive uh, when I got uh, back from vacation. And the disc did not work. I got one of the uh, Bad Batch games, and the Microsoft support for that was absolutely positively atrocious. One of the worst customer experiences I've ever had. Let me tell you something, guys. If you can ever avoid talking with Microsoft on the phone, do it, because they are absolutely freaking horrible, and you will want every single minute of your life back that they steal from you. Okay? It is absolutely terrible. But all we had to do, Go to Amazon.com. I told him, listen, I, I just clicked through it. Didn't you have to talk to anybody? There was something wrong with the disk you sent. It's a defect. I didn't have to prove it. They just said, we're sending you a brand new copy today. It'll be there tomorrow. And just wrap the game up and send it to us within a month. Done. Then, that's exactly what happened. You have a brand new copy sealed inbox of the game the next day. So, And they didn't charge me any extra for that, obviously, which they shouldn't have. And uh, it was no big deal. Just sent back the old copy. The, the, the new disc, of course, worked fine, like most of the discs do. And, it, and I was ready to go. Um, so I have to say, 
the, the convenience factor that Mr. K spoke of is not something that, that I really rely on. When I buy a game, I'm going to buy it because I got a, a deal on it, and I'm not worried about it taking two or three days, uh, or even a full week, uh, a work week, let's say, to get where I am so that I can pop it in the drive and start playing. I really don't mind doing that. And I think uh, the, maybe those of us that are a little older and don't have a lot of time to play, um, and don't spend a lot of our time playing video games, probably understand that better. So that's just my, my two cents. I really prefer Amazon.com for my new game purchases. And ever since my Halo Reach experience this year, that is something that I am absolutely going to be a big advocate of. I love the idea of buying my new games online, especially when you can get some awesome deals. Oh, and by the way, I want to thank the Mill White Mage for putting that picture up there, showing a, a little bit of a retrospective. It's somehow the ridiculous prices. That are on that they put on used games, just calling them ridiculously good prices in the marketing. But you look at it, you go, how the hell are they selling used games this expensively? That's obviously where they're making a lot of their money. But I just wanted to talk about the retail part of it. So, all right, well that was uh, that was the wrap up of last week's weekly ringer. Thanks for all of your comments. Uh, the other thing I do want to touch on uh, before we move on is uh, there was a. Uh, a couple of uh, thoughts about whether I check anything else outside of my own content and blog posts. Um, uh, I absolutely positively do. I look at everything that we put on the site. Um, the forums, though, guilty. I'm not on the forums as much as I used to be. I'm also not on the forums as much um, uh, as maybe some of you would like me to be. I apologize for that, but uh, there, you know, the, the, I, I do get there every once in a while. So if if I post something in a forum, if you post something in a forum, and I don't respond within a really quick amount of time, uh, and it's something you want a response from me on, you can always use the private message feature on the website to send me a private message, which actually will uh, I will get a ping from that, and I'll be able to respond to you very quickly. So please don't feel, guys, like I just read my own stuff and that the only way you can get a hold of me is to pop into the comments. Remember, you can always send me an email at Commodore128 at ClanOfTheGrayWolf.com. And as I say, you can always just send me a private message via the website um, to uh, get instant access, if you will, to the Commodore and my mind share. Not uh, that any of you could care less about that. Anyway, so, um, but I definitely do see everything, and I do read everything, and I do watch what happens uh, from the rest of the site. I don't just check my own stuff. I know you weren't accusing me. Nobody was accusing me, but I just want to make that very clear. I am supportive and a very active participant in everything that we do. Now, I wanted to, I told you uh, very early in this Weekly Ringer video that I was going to ask a question about some of your favorite 90s television. And uh, I'm not sure what got me thinking about this, actually, recently. Um, I don't know. There was a, a, a I, I think I heard a TV theme somewhere on a radio show or something, and I just thought, oh, my gosh. Uh, remember all those great television themes that, that came around, specifically in the 80s, when everything had to have a, a theme, and it was a really big deal, and blah, 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 blah. Well, I got to thinking. I wanted to ask you guys a question about TV themes but instead of just going through classic TV themes, and some of you will probably end up commenting on those anyway, and that's fine. This week's Ringer is going to be about some of the best television music, okay? I want to ask you a very specific question, and that is, what is your favorite, or what is the best, not what is your favorite, what is the best cartoon theme song of all time? The best cartoon theme song of all time. So uh, g go back there, get on YouTube, listen up to some of those themes, get those nostalgia juices going, see what you think about what, uh, you know, what, what maybe your favorite memories about some of your old favorite TV shows are and uh, post away. Um, feel free, by the way, to put up some YouTube links so that we can all go and listen, just in case we haven't heard those particular themes and we'll all give a listen to all of the comments that are coming and I hope there are plenty of them to listen to. I love me some good cartoon theme songs, especially of the nostalgic variety. So that is the Weekly Ringer for next week. Uh, thanks for watching everybody. Again, I am the Commodore from the Clan of the Grey Wolf and there is no reset button.